Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. ICK would like to welcome you all to our Tuesday webinar series, The Stories of the Prophets by Sheikh Ahmad Ibn Saifuddin. We started the series last week, so today is our second talk on the subject, inshallah. Today we will cover the stories of our Prophet Adam salam and Nuh salam. After the talk, we will have 15 minutes of Q&A, question and answers. You can either type your questions or you can also raise your hand. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, you could raise your hand as well. I would like to thank Sheikh Ahmad ibn Saifuddin for his time and commitment to conduct this series. Dr. Ahmad ibn Saifuddin obtained his BA in Arabic and Literature from Imam Muhammad bin Saud Islamic University in Riyadh. He holds Master's in Communication from California State University and his PhD in Mass Communication from Indiana University. Sheikh has been involved with Dawah activities for uh, more than 25 years, uh, actually four decades, uh, I would say, 40 years. And he has vast experience in uh, addressing uh, audience all around uh, the world, uh, including several conferences and also on TV channels like Peace TV, Huda TV, and Saudi TV. Without further ado, I hand it over to Sheikh Ahmad ibn Saifuddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome everyone tonight and thank very much the organizers for this meeting, uh, the uh, Islamic Center of Kuwait and also the uh, Foreign Relations Department at uh, the uh, uh, organization of Masiratul Khair, uh, Kuwait Masiratul Khair. Uh, uh, before I start talking about the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, I'd like to answer a question that was raised earlier about uh, the uh, the reason why we were not told in the glorious Quran about prophets from areas other than this particular area in the Middle East. Uh, such as Iraq, Syria, uh, which is greater Syria, uh, and uh, Egypt, and the Arabian Peninsula. Well, according to uh, scholars, the uh, because after reviewing this and, and, and uh, seeing what the scholars uh, have said in this regard, they are pointing to two points, for, or three points. First, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to every nation a prophet, according to the glorious Quran. So there was no nation uh, which was not sent uh, with a warner, which, which uh, a, a warner was not sent to, meaning a prophet that will warn them against the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also he's a glad tider, meaning Bashir wa Nadir. He gives them the Bishara and the Nidara. So that's basically uh, regarding the... Uh, the issue of, of every nation has been sent a prophet before the prophet of Muhammad and, be, uh, and, and this is, this is uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not punish a nation without giving them a warning we will not punish any nation unless we send them a messenger how would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish a nation or ask a nation to worship him without sending someone to guide them, to tell them, because we we saw in, in the uh, earlier uh, session last, last week, talking about the importance of sending messengers so that to convey the message of, uh, of Islam to them, to teach the able to, uh, to know so this is for fact. Uh, also, Allah in the Glorious Quran said, وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلًا مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَصَصْنَا عَلَيْكَ Some of them, Allah told their stories in the Glorious Quran. And some of them, uh, Allah did not tell their stories. So we would say that uh, if there were nations in those areas, uh, a long, long uh, time or different times of history, um, no doubt Allah sent them messengers or prophets. However, 
when we talk, when we see in the glorious Quran, first the main messengers, particularly Ulul Azm, those with great determination and um, zeal for for the truth and uh, persistence, uh, those are the five: Adam, Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad. Alayhim, uh, uh, sorry, not Adam. Uh, 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 Nuh, Ibrahim, Musa, Isa, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhim jami'an. Now, this is, these are the five uh, prophets with al-azm, those who had this determination. So, uh, they, they are the most um, that had confrontations with their own nations with different times and different styles. And basically, they, have, they had so many common things among all the prophets and also the rejectors the disbelievers and the tactics they used to uh, try to, uh, uh, you know, reject their message. So that's for one thing. The other, when all of these things, all these prophets happen to be in this area. Secondly, the prophets that were that were sent and, and were told in the in the glorious Quran are basically known to the Arabs and to the people of the book. Those, uh, because they would not bis disbelieve. They know for a fact either the scholars in uh, among the Christians or the Jews or even among the polytheists and the uh, disbelievers, they all know about these uh, prophets and messengers and what happened from either scriptures or from what they were told. So they are fair in order to establish the religion of Islam. And that uh, could give you some explanation why wasn't the case with uh, other nations um, in, in either in the East or in the West. Now, coming to the story of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. Adam uh, is the father of humanity. Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, was created from, he was the first human being uh, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, he... Uh, he created him from uh, dust, from the earth, uh, just like Allah said, in مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تراب. So both Isa and Adam were created from dust, although they came in different ways, which I will talk about how they were created, but the point is they are originally from dust. And this dust actually took some stages. That's why we have different uh, stages uh, according to the glorious Quran, um, either from uh, Turab, uh, which is dust, or uh, Salsal, just like a rattling uh, uh, with where, where it was uh, given water and then um, turned into Hama in Masnoon, which is um, uh, a kind of stinky type of dirt. Um, also uh, turning to towards uh, the color of, of black. And then uh, like salsal, which is like a rattling type one, when you have this created and, 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 and you blow in it, you, you, you have like a sound for it. Uh, or even before that, mintini lazib, meaning from a, uh, a sticky type of dust or, or, or dirt. So that was basically, these are the stages where the... Uh, 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 where Adam was created from uh, in in his own creation, um, as uh, then we we became the, um, uh, the descendant, des descendants of um, of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Now Adam was was created from from dust from earth, and the angels al malaika were created from light, and al jinn were created from the sparkle of fire turned to, like and the flames, the black flames, and, and the fire, and the flames of fire. As the glorious Quran said. Uh, but then the um, uh, descendants of Adam were created from, from uh, dust for sure. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam uh, the length of 60 arms. That's very, very uh, tall, as you know. But then it decreased over time until we see today. And it, it looks like uh, till the end of time, people will be shorter in terms of, of, of height uh, until the day of judgment. 
Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, Eve or Hawa from uh, Adam, from the left, uh, 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 the, uh, the left side of, uh, of Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam, so that he would find comfort and security um, so basically to find comfort and companionship, uh, which is uh, exactly what took, what took place. And Allah has given this as a favor for all human beings to have this um, companionship between males and females in the right way, according to the uh, sharia of Allah, according to the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Adam was created without a father and mother. But then Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, was created from a, a mother, from a female, uh, with no male. So uh, Adam was created from no, female, no male or female. Isa was created from a female. Hawa or Eve was created from a male. And every other human being is created from a male and a female. So you see how the power and ability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create um, people in different ways, but they're still human beings, um, as we saw. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Adam alayhi salatu wasalam by uh, asking him, asking the angels to uh, make sujood or prostration. And we know, we know this for sure that this sujood is not a sujood of ibadah, it's not a prostration of worship, but rather of respect. And this used to be Be the case in earlier, it was done by Isa, uh, by uh, by Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam when when his father and his family came to him and they uh, 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 actually uh, uh, they they even submitted in prostration out of respect because he was a king at that time and the same thing uh, when he saw in his dream that uh, eleven stars were making sujood for him. This is out of respect. And the same thing here for the angels who actually uh, made sujood uh, to uh, Adam according to the requirement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, uh, Adam, I'll talk about his prophethood, but then let's see the story, the very famous story of creation, where when he asked the angels to make sujood for Adam, uh, Iblis, Shaitan, the Satan, uh, did not uh, respond to this and did not take command. And then he rejected and objected to that uh, because uh, he said, uh, how would you ask me to uh, uh, submit to him to make sujood for him when he was created from dust and I was created from uh, fire, from, from this, uh, I, you see? Uh, that's, that's what the Quran says in this regard. Um, but then, was he from the angels or, or was he from the jinn? This is uh, 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 greatly debated in the uh, books of tafsir, but the uh, most scholars would, would, would tell you that uh, he was, he was uh, not from the angels because the angels were created in such a fashion as not to submit to us not to reject Allah's uh, orders, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because يَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ لَا يَعْصُونَ اللَّهَ مَا أَمَرَهُمْ وَيَفْعَلُونَ مَا يُؤْمَرُونَ They would not disobey Allah and His commandments, and they would fulfill whatever Allah asked them to do. So uh, only it's out of envy, out of uh, arrogance uh, that uh, Iblis did not want. And this is, by the way, Allah's wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he was, he was from among the jinn, but he was, because he was a, a great worshiper at that time, before he disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he joined the angels, and therefore he, he became like a companion for the angels. But when he asked the, uh, Allah asked the angels to do, he was supposed to follow Allah's commandment because he was with them, but he did not do, do so. And therefore, um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, kicked him out of of, uh, of Jannah, of paradise, um, and he um, he came out on earth, and then 
as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam and Eve, he, uh, he asked them to, uh, you know, to, uh, to, to, to live in, in, um, in, in Jannah and to enjoy uh, Allah's blessings. But they did not, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, Iblis, out of his envy, out of his, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, determined that he would be in hellfire. And he asked Allah uh, something. And he said that if you, if I am destined to hellfire, uh, if you allow me, uh, my Rabb, oh Allah, then, then I will deceive them. I will take them along with me to hellfire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, if they, if they accept from you, if they obey you. So this is a test for humans and for the jinn, those that uh, messengers uh, and prophets were sent to in order to uh, uh, to tell them about uh, shaitan. So he is the first and the most uh, staunch enemy of all human beings and all of the jinn. That is Iblis. Uh, billahi minhu. May Allah uh, curse him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, keep us away from, from his own uh, deception and um, and whispering and all the evil things that he's uh, trying to get us into in order to disobey Allah. This can be seen in many places in the glorious Quran because uh, there are about 16 times Allah mentioned in the glorious Quran, uh, Adam alayhi salatu was salam, and in stories like um, from verses 30 to 39 in Surah Al-Baqarah, the uh, second uh, surah or chapter in the glorious Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about uh, uh, a story of creation and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to, uh, how he wanted to leave uh, uh, someone as not, so, not, not as a vice gerund. This is one of the problems regarding the translation of the glorious Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not want to take someone to to act on his behalf on earth no not all, all but khalifa meaning someone uh, who can be uh, followed like generation after generation that's khalifa khalifa fil ardi khalaif meaning everyone would follow the other so they will be generations one after the other until the day of judgment so they will stay they will be living on earth uh, that's allah's determination subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can you can find and refer to the story uh, there in suratul baqarah wa'idh qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa this was like a discussion between allah and the angels qalu ataj'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku ad-dima' wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nuqaddisu lak qala inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu they ask allah how would you ya allah how would you uh, uh, put someone who is going to shed some blood uh, and he will create corruption on earth. Now, they would not know the unseen or ilmul ghaib, but rather either they were told or because of um, uh, what they saw from jinn uh, that they would disobey and what they saw from iblis, uh, na'udhu billah, uh, you know, after uh, they would, they would, they were, expecting this so it's either out of ilham or allah gave them this uh, idea or notion of they will not do it or because of expectation or because of the jinn because um jinn were on earth and uh, they uh, they said that jinn would would be uh, living on earth and and humans would be joining because jinn were created before before the uh, uh, the human beings. Now, um, Adam alayhi salatu was is, uh, is uh, and, and, and generally the uh, nature of human beings who are good are better than angels uh, because they said, Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma allamtana. This is out of their own um, great manner and, and behavior before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, glory be to you, we have no knowledge except what you uh, uh, tell us or teach us to do. Anyway, uh, Iblis, uh, after this, he uh, whispered to Adam and Hawa, 
and even swore to them وَقَاسَمَهُمَا He was swearing to them, or of course uh, uh, lying to them, uh, that I am an advisor for you. إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ فَدَلَّهُمَا بِغُرُورٍ So he actually um, uh, deceived them uh, so that uh, in he, he, uh, he said, why don't you eat from the tree? Allah forbade them from eating from the tree Yet they, uh, 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 you know, Iblis came and, and asked them to do, to do this and said, uh, why don't you eat from this? Uh, now, what is this tree? Allah knows. I know that uh, the very famous among the Christians and, and Jews, it's the, the apple and some people believe in that. Or uh, according to some uh, historical uh, records or some uh, uh, books, even in tafsir, they uh, pointed to um, the palm tree, to uh, uh, grapes, but actually there is no um, affirmation of any of these types of trees. So we don't know what the tree was. The point is they, uh, Allah asked them not to, to um, eat from that tree, but they ate uh, based on the advice of Iblis, na'udhu uh, billahi minhu. So, uh, we didn't know. Al Imam Al Tabari said there is no need for to, 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 to talk about this, and there is no uh, evidence from the glorious Quran or the Sunnah regarding that. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created Adam on on the day of, of Friday, and even he will be uh, entering. Uh, he even he entered uh, Jannah on the day of Friday. He was even kicked out of uh, uh, Jannah uh, even on Friday, and Al Jannah is real, real Jannah, the Jannah that we. Uh, are promised inshallah as Muslims to enter along with believers throughout history from the time of Adam until the day of judgment. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam with his own hands, with his own two hands in a way that fits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's not like us, like uh, our hands as humans or we cannot imagine how he was uh, created by Allah's hands, but we know this for fact, not by his own power, according to some uh, interpretations. Uh, oh, uh, this is said wrongly. It's not true. Allah uh, gave four favors to Adam, alayhi salatu wasalam. He created him with his own hand. He uh, blew from his own um, uh, spirit in him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He asked the uh, angels to prostrate out of respect uh, for him. And he even taught them all of the names of the things in order to go by in, in, this, in this life. So Allah created things. He actually created the heavens and the earth and, and created um, animals and created things before he created uh, human beings in order to enjoy all of these things, um, you know, the, uh, uh, that uh, were created because everything in this, in this earth is, uh, is for Adam and his uh, and his descendants now adam alayhi salatu wasalam, was a prophet for sure because although the quran did not say he was a nabi uh, but the prophet sallam, said that he said uh, in the hadith of abu dar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said i said ya rasul allah ayyul anbiya kana awwal which prophet uh, was first he said, Adam, and I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, uh, was he a prophet? He said, yes, Nabiyun Mukallam, meaning a talk to a prophet, meaning Allah talked to him, spoke to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, how many were there among the messengers? And he said, 300 and some uh, teens, like, like uh, 15, 13, according to some other reports. And we said last time that according to some reports, uh, the number could be uh, like 315. However, some scholars even said regarding this hadith that's not a strong hadith or sound hadith. Um, and therefore, Allah knows the ultimate number of uh, prophets and messengers. Although it's very interesting to, in order to remember the, the number of, of prophets, they said the number of prophets is just like the number of companions, 124,000. And the number of messengers is like the number of uh, uh, Muslims who fought in Badr in the, in the 
317 or 15, um, just to make this like a, a, a way to remember. However, we cannot say for certain that this was the actual or the exact number. The most important thing that we learned from the story of Adam والسلام, that he was sent um, to his own people, to his own, like to his own children and, uh, and descendants at his own time. And he stayed for like all these generations, even um, uh, according to some reports, his son Sheath um, even was, was sent as a prophet. And for 10 centuries or 10 generations, because Qarn in um, the Glorious Quran would mean either a generation or a century, a hundred years. And Allah knows uh, best what is the exact meaning of Qarn. But uh, according to Hadith, he stayed uh, like 10, 10 centuries or 10 uh, generations before the coming of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And he wanted to uh, keep the race of the human, of humanity going. That's why he came with, uh, to legalize marriage according to the uh, Islamic law, uh, the Sharia law of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam at his own time, and even to forbid um, the uh, killing uh, and the bloodshed among humans. And you know, this was from the earlier times that uh, this was prohibited. So he told them about this. He, he asked them to worship Allah and they stayed with Tawheed from that time until the coming of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam when uh, shirk started uh, at Nuh's time alayhi salatu wasalam. So we can learn uh, a few things from the story of uh, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, the weakness of the human beings, um, uh, you know, in front of Iblis. That's why we need to hold to Allah's um, worship and remembers in order to stay away from uh, the whispering and deception of shaitan. Also, the mercy of Allah as he um, accepted the repentance of Adam. And there is no inherited uh, sin like in other religions. There is in Islam no uh, original sin. Uh, either you, you, you are born free of sins and it's you who can determine whether you want to sin or not. Also the importance of knowledge as the angels did not uh, know uh, the knowledge of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted from them when he asked them to submit and to prostrate for Adam. Uh, Adam also uh, uh, hastened into uh, repentance and uh, we need to do the same thing as long as we, uh, you know, as soon as we uh, commit a sin, we need to hurry up and, and, and repent just like Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. And we, uh, we also need to understand that this was the story of creation, not the story of um, uh, uh, evolution as, uh, as was found in the books of science uh, from the, the earlier times when they, uh, were telling us that uh, um, you know the origin of human beings were either monkey or something some animal uh, closer to a, a dog a monkey and then they uh, they developed uh, and um, you know they evolved uh, you know until they become like full human beings well this is rejected not the islamic uh, way of looking at uh, the stories of uh, the creation of uh, human beings now, coming, I think that's enough because of the time uh, about, Nuh, about uh, Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, let's come to Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam is another father of humanity because he is called the second Adam, uh, the smallest Adam, smaller than, than Adam alayhi salatu wasalam in terms of, of history, but not, not of uh, importance or nor status. Uh, because those people uh, that stayed on earth after the Tufan, um, uh, uh, when uh, there was a, a, a whole, uh, uh, you know, drowning of everything at that time, only the ones who stayed after that uh, and who had uh, some children and uh, descendants were, were 
were from Nuh some and not from any other um, uh, family or uh, other lineage, only from the lineage uh, of Nuh So that's why, that's why he, he is called uh, the father, the second father of humanity. Um, uh, Nuh was the first messenger to be sent to, uh, to human beings, uh, to the people of earth. Adam والسلام, was the first prophet. Nuh والسلام, was the first uh, messenger. And um, uh, he, uh, he stayed, as I said, he came 10 centuries or 10 generations after uh, Adam والسلام. Nuh was mentioned 43 times in the glorious Quran. He was mentioned in 23 surahs of the glorious Quran. And that's why sometimes in the same surah, he, he would be mentioned more than one time. He was mentioned uh, in the surahs of Al-A'raf, Yunus, Hud, uh, Al-Anbiya, Al-Mu'minun, Al-Shu'ara, Al-Ankabut, Al-Safat, uh, Al-Qamar, and then a whole uh, surah under his name, Surah Nuh. And then he was mentioned in uh, surahs like An-Nisa, Al-An'am, uh, uh, Bara'a, um, which is At-Tawbah, Ibrahim, Al-Isra, uh, Al-Ahzab, Sad, Ghafir, Al-Shura, Qaf, Al-Dhariyat, Al-Hadid, and At-Tahrim. So these are the, stor the surahs that um, uh, the story of Nuh, والسلام, were mentioned, uh, where, where he was mentioned in. Now, where did he live? How long he lived? Allah knows for, uh, for, for sure. Uh, but most probably, according to historians, he lived around the area of Iraq, maybe around the area of Mosul, um, or the Jazeera between the, uh, uh, the uh, which is the uh, peninsula between uh, the two uh, rivers, uh, uh, Al-Furat -Al and uh, Dijla. So the Euphrates and Dijla uh, rivers, uh, that's, that's the area of, which is, which is a, a very, uh, um, you know, fertile soil there, and uh, many things grew because of the water uh, in that in that area. But uh, in these ten centuries, as I said uh, earlier, um, between Adam and Nuh, people were living according to Tawheed. Um, but then, um, when um, the time, uh, you know, elapsed, the uh, the followers uh, uh, tried to remember and to be strong in ibadah and uh, you know they 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 had some idea that uh, we have these great uh, righteous people uh, by the name of wad suwa yaghuth yaquq and nasr these are five names of uh, righteous people that, before the coming of nuh والسلام, and they uh, these people during the time of nuh wanted to remember them so they said why don't we like make idols for them so whenever we so we see these idols we worship uh allah subhanahu wa ta'ala better and we remember them and so we strive and be strong in our worship well that was the beginning and then after some generation this generation died uh, a new generation came and then uh, iblis came to do his work and he said to them well your ancestors used to worship these and to ask them to in to bring rain uh, because they they passed through like a drought so they thought that was the truth and they 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 submitted to them and they asked him to be to intercede between them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and slowly and to, slowly slowly they 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 uh, came close and close to them until they worshiped them completely and until the idols came like a practice in the lives of people. Na'udhu Billah. This is the shirk or polytheism where they wanted to worship with Allah uh, idols or any creature to intercede between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like the story of Um Salama and Um Habiba, the two wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as they went to Abyssinia or Habasha and there they saw uh, a church under the name of by the name of Maria and they said uh, they saw people worshiping idols and and they mentioned this to the Prophet ﷺ when they were you know 
uh, came to uh, Medina and he said, well, this used to be the practice that when a righteous man, uh, uh, you know, is, uh, they remember him and they build a masjid for him or under, under his name and they uh, make these uh, images or sculptures, if you will, or idols, so, and, uh, and then they worship them. Well, as the Prophet ﷺ, these are the worst type of people before Allah on the day of judgment. So this is the, the most terrible thing, and it's not acceptable by sane, wise people, but this was um, uh, the, the practice, just like in the story of uh, the people of the cave, uh, Ahlul Kahf. Again, uh, people who came after them, they said, masjida. So they will build a masjid for them and then they will put their uh, pictures in there or their um, sculptures, images, in order to remember them uh, so they can worship Allah better. This is a way of uh, uh, to start this uh, uh, worship of idols. Now, we know that uh, Nuh stayed for 90, 950 and, and, and years, 1,000 except 50 years. فَلَبِثَ فِيهِمْ أَلْفَ سَنَةٍ إِلَّا خَمْسِينَ عَامًا So he stayed all this long period of time uh, uh, asking, them, asking them to come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to, to come uh, to the worship of Allah, to uh, uh, worship him, to... Uh, you know, to uh, uh, accept his, his uh, uh, he, he is the only deity worthy of worship and not to take partners with him and to obey his, his commandments. But they rejected, his own people rejected him and they accused him of so many things. They, they actually rejected him and, and, uh, and turned his uh, uh, call to Tawheed in, you know, with, with, at least eight accusations. They said, you are a human being. Innama anta bashar. They said, uh, uh, So only the lowest among us are the ones who follow you. And uh, he said, we said, Ma nara lakum alayna min fadl. We don't see any privilege uh, for you over us. Um, but also they, they accused them of, of lying. Bal nagunnukum kathibin. And they said, you are in misguidance, clear misguidance. And they said, why would Allah send a human being? He could have sent um, uh, angels. Uh, uh, and then he said, we have not heard the, uh, of this uh, among our ancestors, um, grandfathers and, and the earlier generations. And finally, they accused him of being uh, insane, crazy. He is not telling something of wisdom and insanity. Finally, in order to um, discredit him, I said he's just a, a, a liar. He's, uh, he's uh, uh, insane and he doesn't uh, know what he's, what he's saying. But he kept uh, asking them. He, he even actually uh, faced all their, their um, you know, uh, rejection and even um, all their, their uh, accusations. He faced them with, with some uh, sabr or patience and uh, shukr of Allah because he was abdun shakur. This is one of the uh, characteristics of uh, of uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. Even they, um, you know, he, he, uh, he tried with them all possible means. Uh, if you consult Surah Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, you find that uh, he called them in different ways. Uh, uh, so he said, you know, he kept telling them uh, in, in privacy and in public, he kept talking to them 
uh, openly and 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 uh, in in circles, close close uh, circles. He uh, talked to them uh, day and night, uh, in all situations, at all times. But they kept rejecting, and he even promised them of rewards in this life. That if you uh, ask forgiveness, if you come close, to Allah, Allah will provide you with risk, with uh, uh, providence, will will give you some good things in this life, children and uh, wealth. But they rejected. Even he promised them of Jannah, but uh, they uh, they asked. You know, finally they said, "Well, why don't you bring a uh, a punishment from Allah?" You said that if we don't follow you you're going to bring a punishment from Allah. Why don't you do so? Well, he uh, challenged them with, and this is uh, according to some uh, uh, scholars of tafsir, this is the miracle of Nuh As you know, every prophet or messenger came with a miracle. And the miracle is, he said, as uh, the ayah 71 in Surah Yunus, Allah Azza wa says, وَاتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ نَبَأَ نُوحِ إِذْ قَالَ لِقَوْمِهِ يَا قَوْمِ إِن... Uh, يا قوم إن كان كبر عليكم مقامي وتذكيري بآيات الله فعليه توكلت فأجمعوا أمركم وشركاءكم ثم لا يكن أمركم عليكم أمة ثم قضوا إلي ولا تنظرون five things you know tell them the story Allah says recite upon them the um, news of Nuh عليه الصلاة والسلام when he told his own people he said that if um, you do not understand my position if it's too much for you to understand and even my reminding you of Allah's signs and Allah's uh, verses, uh, then I depend, I put my full trust in Allah. So gather all your matter together, meaning decide together and on one decision. And shurak wa shuraka'akum, all the supporters like of jinn, of idols, everyone that supports your in your claim against uh, me, meaning that you need to disclose this to everyone, announce this to everyone. Come to me and try to kill me, try to reject me, try to do harm to me. And then, and do not even wait until tomorrow, until uh, future. Do it now. If you are able to do so, he did it because out of all these many, many years, hundreds of years, he stayed with him. As, as we said, 950 years, he kept on doing this da'wah because in earlier times, the ages of nations used to be too long. Uh, and that was the, uh, the story where he, he challenged them and uh, they even hit him. They even, um, you know, blood came out of his... Uh, his face, alayhi salatu was salam, it was, it was really, really a, 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 a terrible uh, confrontation. But this uh, is the story of uh, every prophet, that not all people, he, uh, the prophets were sent to, believed in them, accepted them. Many, in fact, uh, uh, rejected. And he, when, with, with uh, Nuh, alayhi salatu was salam, Allah said, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Only very few accepted his call that's why you find many people not obeying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as allah says in the glorious quran if you follow most of the people on earth they will misguide you away from the path of allah subhanallah this is this is the way and uh, you know uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Nuh alayhi salatu wa ask Allah, Rabbi inna qawmi kathaboon, faftih bayni wa bayna wa fathan wa anta khayru al-fatihin. Even, try, you know, he was trying to find a way and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he made dua. Rabbi la tadhar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin dayyara. You find this in Surah Nuh. At the end of the uh, surah, he asked Allah, O oh Allah, do not leave from among them, anyone who lives on the face of earth, Rabbi la tadar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin dayyara, from among the disbelievers, either they will be saved or not to be saved or to be drowned. So um, he uh, he came out to uh, then to the uh, uh, to uh, Allah commanded him 
to, uh, to start building this uh, uh, Safina or the Ark ship of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. And I think uh, probably it's, it's nice to stop here uh, to continue inshallah next week talking about how he built uh, that uh, Safina or uh, Ark and how he uh, gathered all of the creatures on that ship, what happened with, with that ship, what happened to his own people, what happened to him, um, and then what could we benefit from uh, this, uh, the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam alayhi wa ala jami' al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. I think I need to stop here to answer some of the, your, some of the questions that you might have um, and also to prepare for Aisha because maybe we're ahead of you uh, in Riyadh uh, and the time of Aisha is almost near. So I would stop here. Jazakumullahu khayran wa wallahu ta'ala a'lam sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'i. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for these uh, beautiful narrations of the two stories. Uh, as we go into question and answers, uh, uh, Sheikh, how much time do we have? Can you hear me, Sheikh? Do you hear me? Uh, yes, uh, do you hear me? Uh, how much time do me? we have? Brother Rafiq? Um. Uh, how many prophets are there? I think we did answer that with their names. 25 were mentioned in the Glorious Quran, as you, as you know. Um, I think that's, that's the question. The second question from Samir Qazi, uh, angels told Allah that jinn used to shed blood, but we all know that uh, jinn are made from smoking fire and they don't have blood like we humans do. What's the hikmah behind this statement from the angels? Well, uh, I, as I said, I, it's either from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who told them about what would he, you know, he will create um, these human beings in, in such a fashion as to be able to shed the blood. Or maybe they, they, they have uh, uh, a blood that fits their own uh, kind of, of, uh, of, of creation. Um, well, we don't know. Uh, you know, so the idea is to to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows and he has full knowledge of what will happen um, to these people in the future. Uh, there's a question, the sajda to Adam alayhi salatu is interpret, interpreted by some being directed to Allah, not to Adam. It was to glorify Allah. No, 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 no. This is, this is not to Adam. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ uh, uh, not sujood for to Allah, but rather sujood for Adam. And uh, how do you interpret uh, لَهُ سُجَّدًا Meaning, you know, Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam and uh, in the beginning of Surah Yusuf إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ you know, even Qamar and, and Shams, uh, moon and, and, and sun were making sujood to Yusuf in his dream, meaning that they were doing it in humbleness. And uh, this is, as I said, not sujood of ibadah, but rather sujood of um, the, uh, you know, uh, sujood of respect. And this was, was a tradition uh, in, in the hadith, لو كنت آمراً أحداً أن يسجد لأحد لأمرت المرأة أن تسجد لزوجها If I was to uh, ask anyone to make sujood for anyone, I would ask uh, uh, a wife to make sujood for her husband, meaning showing the right and respect for, for husbands. But this was not possible because then at the time Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, prohibited. Before... Uh, sujood of respect was, was, was accepted and allowed, but uh, sujood of respect uh, at the, after coming to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, was not. And you, and you know, subhanAllah, because he was the last and final messenger from Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, what is the story of the sons of Adam, alayhi as-salatu was salam? Well, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a good, good question. Uh, 
uh, hopefully we can talk about Habil and Qabil and what happened to them. And uh, of course, uh, it's a very, very interesting story and also mentioned, uh, as you know, in Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah, we, we need to, uh, um, uh, we need to talk about this. Uh, Ilyas, yes, of course. Is Ilyas a prophet? Yes. وَإِنَّ إِلْيَاسَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ So we know for sure, um, for sure, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, we, we're, we're, make, we're sure that uh, Idris is uh, from among the messengers uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we'll come, we'll come to uh, the stories of other prophets, inshallah. We are still in the beginning of the, um, of the series. So, uh, yes, we can mention next time the stories, not only uh, of the children of Adam, but also the children of Nuh, alayhi salatu salam, and what happened with uh, his own particular son, one of his uh, four sons, what happened to him when, he, when, uh, when, when Prophet Nuh, alayhi salatu salam, asked him to come and join him with um, the rest of believers uh, in, uh, in embarking uh, the ship but he did not listen. He wanted to hide in a mountain, but this not this could not uh, help him, and he was drowned. Uh, but who was he, and what is the story of the other uh, uh, sons? We will talk about that, insha Allah Taala. I thank you very much for uh, today, and hopefully, uh, insha Allah, we'll meet next Tuesday, insha Allah Taala, uh, to uh, tell more about the stories of uh, the prophets of Allah alayhim jami'an salawatullahi wa salamu and to learn about these great people who really were sent to save people from shirk and to call upon the uh, worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the only deity worthy of worship until then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you safe and sound and to uplift this pandemic from the world and keep us all safe and um, guide us and keep us on the straight path by his own will and permission subhanahu wa ta'ala and grace wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaykum assalam jazakallah khair shaykh and thanks a lot for the audience inshallah we will see you all next week at the same time 7:15 pm kuwait time and saudi time jazakallah khair assalamu alaykum